Yeah. Okay, guys, we're about to get started. Thank you guys for coming right now. Sorry, well, my one or two minutes earlier, but uh, always technology problems. So I was trying to record it on, on Facebook, on a Facebook group, which at the end I'll send you guys access to it. So in case you want to hear something uh, about what we're about to uh, introduce today, um, we're going to do uh, Friday, first Friday mastermind. And the purpose of this is really to, uh, more than anything, to empower all of us as entrepreneurs, as small businesses, to take our businesses to that next level. I think that is so needed today. From my background of, of coaching and, and marketing for the past 15 years, I, I've been there, done that, and, and got the t-shirt. I was, I was the biggest failure. And, and I think one of my biggest things is that I've always been, I'm stuck because I think I know it all. And I'm always, it's always like that. It's true. It's like we got blindfolded and we're like, we know it all, we know it all, we know it all. And there's some, some things that maybe you can hear from myself. That's why I really want to bring all the speakers. So it's not just me talking, right? But I also have, want to bring some other people that have something to tell us, something that we can really use. Uh, for our businesses, because if not, we just come into an event, and I, I, which I love networking. We can just come in here and network all day, but at the end of the day, it's what are we putting into our minds to be able to develop the one thing, that passion that we have for our businesses, right? And if we're not implementing those things, because I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the first ones. The past five years, I have learned so much information, blah, 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 information, overload, information, information, information. I took courses. I, I spent like $10,000 last year in courses. Courses, 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 and at the end of the day, the, the last one that I learned was uh, it was it was a course from POD, and the one thing I learned from them was like, that's great, you know that, but what are you implementing? Like, to me in my faith, that's great, you're a Christian, but how are you implementing in your life? And for us, it needs to be that we're gonna have some announcements, we're gonna have an amazing speaker, then at the end, we're gonna have some raffles, some games. Oh, no, not games, right? I'm not ready to play games. We can play games. We can play games. We can play games. We can play games. We're going to have some raffles. Um, so that way we can leave here with some knowledge, some understanding of what we can use, right? Or even if you don't get nothing out of it because your business is amazing and you don't need no help, <clears throat> maybe use it to empower somebody else. Because at the end of the day, it's better to give than to receive, right? Let's use this, whatever information we get, how we can empower somebody else. I met a couple of people here today, new Man, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Please invite other entrepreneurs who, who, who need the help. Maybe this topic is not for you, but you can use it for somebody else when they need it, right? Because that's what we're supposed to be called, right? To be able to help other people. Uh, <clears throat> Gina, thank you so much. Because Gina is, we all know, we, we call her the networking queen. Um, um, I talk to you. You, you. you do the things that many people are not good at. And we're not, you have to understand what we're good at and we're not good at. You're so great at putting people together. You're so great at giving back to people. You're so great at spending time, night, late nights. I know because I get sometimes, we, we talk to the 11, 12 o'clock at night, we're like, we're still working at that time. And I think we should all learn from, from something like that. We're like, what can I learn from her? I'm like, I'm not staying up until one o'clock today. I'm not gonna. <laughs> but all the things that I can learn from you, and that is the commitment that you have. So I appreciate you for being there, for being that person. Right. Well, let's give her up. She's got, she's got some announcements, so we're gonna let Gina come over here and give us some some announcements, and then we'll go. We'll we'll get into 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 the the meat. The meat. No, thank you, thank you, and thank you for everyone for being here. Uh, just really enjoyed just being able to have the opportunity and the honor to bring it all together as a way to not only learn but to build relationships. So those that are here for the first time that are meeting me, my name is Gina Barbera and uh, director of Stone Oak Ladies Business Association, Alma Ranch, 151 Business Association, and Northside Business Association. So if you're here for the first time, I think I got everybody's cards and I'll keep you updated. I just wanted to let y'all know that there's two breakfast events next week in case you're interested for Stone Oak Ladies. Uh, it's gonna be Tuesday. It's gonna be at main event um, off of 281 and 1604 from 745 to 930. It's $15 uh, for members and it's $18 for future members. So if you want to meet some wonderful uh, women in business, I encourage you to come on Tuesday. 
if you would like to come to Northside Business Association breakfast, that's going to be taking place on Thursday next week, which is October the 8th. Same place, 745 to 930 at main event, same time, same place. So I just wanted to let you know, it's also a full breakfast. How many went to the main event? Uh, yes. 51 or 21? Yes. yes. Wasn't that wonderful? It was fun. It was a great, great presentation. So I'm super excited that um, they're, they're opening up for us. There's not going to be anybody in there except us. So um, that is just going to be anyone that wants to just feel a little bit more comfortable and stuff like that. So we do have the two breakfasts next week. I also wanted to um, encourage that any of you that are coming next week, um, we actually have Richard James that's doing a food drive for the San Antonio Food Bank. So I know that you might have seen that maybe last minute on the email, but if you do happen to go uh, next week and you want to bring um, some canned goods or other non-perishable items, we'll be going ahead and collecting them there too at those two breakfast networking. So if you missed it this time and didn't have the time to go through your pantry or whatever. So um, I also wanted to let you know that we do have two Zooms. Uh, we have one on the 14th. So not everybody is comfortable meeting in person. So we also do Zoom and we have um, Richard Carter from Carter Insurance uh, that's gonna be talking about Alignable on the 14th and how to grow your business then. And then we have on the 21st, we'll be having just more of an opportunity just to meet in break room. So Javi, I'm hoping you'll be able to be available and help me yeah. with that. As long as I don't have a fire alarm. Okay. <laughs> that one's gonna be on the 21st. And those times are from 10, 15 to 11:30. And if you're on the email list, you'll automatically get the link soon, okay? And these are bringing all the, the groups together. So it doesn't matter from Stone Oak Ladies, Northside or Alamo Ranch, you're, you're welcome to all come together. And then on the 29th, we're gonna be doing something fun and I haven't figured out what exactly to call it, but it is October, it's the 29th, it's gonna be a mixer, it's gonna be at the Lion Rose, and that's gonna be over off of the rim. So that's gonna be from six to eight, and it'll be a wonderful opportunity again to do something fun and to be able to network. And that is all I have for you. Awesome, so thank, you. thank you, Gina, thank you. All right, I'm gonna get out of the way. And uh, of course, Richard James, family tax, he actually does my taxes, he keeps me in check. But I realize why I, I, I always want to bring the best here, right? And one of the reasons is because I deal with a lot of small businesses and this is one of the biggest struggles that we have when we're talking about saving money in the long term in our business. We don't understand a lot of this stuff. So I hope that he can give us that knowledge um, and information I'm gonna get out of the way and let you get started, James. Let me know if you need anything, I'll be back here. So, okay. yeah. Welcome, to James. All right, good morning, everybody. Um, so Richard James, um, just another quick announcement. So uh, thank you, Gina, for, for teeing up the, uh, the, you know, the teeing up the food drive. Uh, we are giving away a $25 uh, Starbucks gift card. And so if you got the email late and you weren't able to, to provide a, a pair of non perishable item, um, you can still enter in. Uh, if you go to my.safebank.org slash JFT, uh, you can do a, a contribution online. And every dollar that's donated, it can be provided to 70 mil from the San Antonio Food Bank. And now more than ever, especially with COVID and the fall season, there's just a lot of families that are, that are needing food on a weekly basis. I think the number is 120,000 families uh, just in our San Antonio area alone that are. Um, we need a food bank to help them get through the food season. So thank you. Um, but yeah, my name is Richard James. Um, today we're going to talk about um, some tax saving strategies. And there's a lot of different mechanisms and methods to saving on your taxes. And so I really wanted to bring it down to just some of the foundational things that you can do as a business owner to save on taxes. And it all starts with uh, focusing on what matters. It starts with optimizing your deductions and then uh, also understanding if the business entity that you have works for you. So let me introduce my wife, uh, Alexis James. She's actually right, right here in the front. And uh, her primary role is our social media. So she's the one that uh, is, on, is online. She, she keeps me on Facebook. I'm one of those people that I just, I scroll through Facebook. I don't post anything. 
So he makes sure that our clients know what's going on with our business and he's out there engaging with our, uh, with our community. She uh, is very passionate about empowering women. So she's part of a lot of different uh, organizations and, and groups for women empowerment. And uh, I don't know if anybody else here binges on Netflix, but right now her, her current binge is Queen of the South. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw, we were on season one uh, a week ago, and now we're on season three, episode eight. And, uh, <laughs> and then myself, uh, my primary role, I, I run our business as our tax preparer and our tax consultant. Uh, and I'm really passionate about endurance sports and running. Um, it's, it's really what, what just gives me a lot of joy. Um, I'm very involved with the running communities here. I'm on the committee for uh, an organization called Wolfpack Run in Texas. Uh, so I have a lot of fun doing that. And I just broke a three hour marathon through COVID. So mm -hmm. for any runners out there, that was, a, that was a huge accomplishment. And my last name was Money Heist, which that's another, another good one. Um, a little bit about our business. So uh, we are, as, as you can see, we are a family business. And we really do see it as, a, as an honor and privilege to serve our community, to serve our extended community. And when we got into this business, we really wanted to do things differently when it comes to taxes. Often you go into a tax office and things can be very cut and dry, and you're dealing with some really personal information. So we try to be there for our clients. Uh, we began preparing taxes back in 2011, literally out of our uh, college apartment. I don't recommend you go to a tax preparer that's doing taxes out of an apartment. <laughs> but that, that is where we started. And uh, I actually come from a, a background of two generations of accountants. So my uh, grandfather, he's been practicing tax preparation for 40 years now. He's actually uh, just a few miles from this office. Uh, he's 90 years old, still, still going at it. And then my uh, father, his office is in Houston. And he, uh, he's an enrolled agent, so he primarily focuses more on the uh, representation for clients that may have some, some significant tax issues. So we love the numbers, we love what we do, but our biggest passion is, is really being there for families that, are, uh, that we're dealing with. You know, when you're working with taxes, it's, it's a very personal thing. So uh, we really take pride and we honor when our our clients, our tax family, they're coming to us with their, uh, you know, their first house, their children that are being born, uh, their kids going off to college. We get the opportunity to be a part of all of that. And we also get to be a part of the, you know, when people deal with really tough situations and we want to be there for our clients in those seasons. So yeah, we're super committed to just uh, healthy growth and, and networking and Gina, um, thank you so much for putting this on and, and allowing me to speak. And Javi, thank you so much for inviting me. Um, me and Javi are aligned in a, in a lot of different ways when it comes to, to helping businesses and just optimizing and, uh, and just using the resources and partnerships that they're available to These are our three employees. Oh <laughs> so I, I promise you we're not breaking any uh, child labor laws. We, we might be, but, but those are our three kiddos. Uh, Five. My daughter Ada. She's she's five. She just started kindergarten uh, this month uh, or last month. My son Ari, who's four, he's about to go to pre-K. And then our littlest uh, Jax, he'll be two. Or he'll be yeah, he'll be two in just a few weeks. Who loves mom? Really? <laughs> What's that? Who loves mom? <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all about that right now. Who's on the way, right? <laughs> yeah. No. no. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> That three, three is enough. <laughs> All right, so just uh, we're getting into some, some tax content. So just a quick disclosure, uh, the information provided it does not it is not intended to constitute any legal advice. So all of the information, all of the materials, it's available for general information purposes. Everybody's situation is specific to their, to their family, to their business. Uh, and this may not constitute the most update, uh, up-to-date legal or other information although I did put this presentation together this week. Uh, but if you do need more information, definitely consult with your tax attorney, consult with your, uh, with your tax advisor. Um, you shouldn't act or refrain from acting on anything just based off of the content of this presentation alone. All right, so when it comes to saving money on taxes, there is no uh, really silver bullet to saving on taxes. Like it's very, it's very specific to you as an individual. 
to your family, to your business. So a lot of times you'll see presentations or you'll see stuff as you're scrolling through your news, your news feed on Facebook on instantly saving you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. It's, it's very specific to, to you and to your business. So I really think it's important just to start off by, uh, by saying that. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you've got a clear vision for what you're wanting for your business, that can help guide the decisions that you're making, the strategies that you're, that you're implementing, and the partnerships that you're building around you to be successful in not only taxes, but really any, any different element of, of being a business owner. Now, uh, this is my, my little focus target. And as business owners, as entrepreneurs, we tend to focus on our passion, right? Like we, I, I believe that we're here on purpose for a purpose and uh, entrepreneurs and business owners, I, I feel like we're a little bit more in tune to what that purpose is because we've gone out of the status quo and we've pursued something that, that is our passion. And so we tend to focus on that but when you're a business owner, as many of y'all I'm sure already know, there's a lot of other elements to being a business owner. You can't just focus on your passion. There are elements that are in your peripheral. So you've got insurance, you've got to manage your brand, you have to manage your sales, you have to manage licenses, uh, your business plan. Who has a business plan? You don't have to raise your hand. But <laughs> you know, these are things that are, are foundational to your business, but don't necessarily align to what your passion may be, but they're very important. As you go even further out into your peripherals, you've got your, my slide will, there we go. Sit down. You've got your research, your key performance indicator, indicators, your legal, uh, softwares and subscriptions. Are you managing employees, marketing? So there's all of these different elements to being a business owner. And just from experience and what I've seen over the last 10 years, um, I work with lots of different uh, business owners, primarily small businesses. Uh, but taxes is something that is usually only thought about when tax time comes around. Uh, and for better or for worse, normally for worse, that ends up costing people a lot of money. So just going back to the vision and your purpose, it's about being focused on what matters. So are you focused on having a growth mindset when you're tackling these things with your business? Are you proactively planning? Uh, especially for taxes, are you building a solid foundation for your business? And then are you bringing the strategic partnerships around you that are going to help you be successful, such as events like this? These networking events are, are great in building those types of partnerships. What a lot of us end up doing is, is focusing on the business running us. We get into the day to day and we forget a lot of the things that are, that are important on the, on the peripherals. And so we end up like Tamara here, who's, as you can see, is very, uh, frustrating and often for her. All right, so there's two main things that I'll talk about as we get into the actual tax uh, savings. And one of them is optimizing your deductions. And this may seem super, I guess, basic, but uh, it's something that a lot of people just don't quite hit the mark on when it comes to tax time. Um, and then after we talk about optimizing deductions, then I'll also talk about uh, entity formation and ways that you can also structure your business to help optimize taxes. But when it comes to optimizing your deductions, it is absolutely critical that you're proactively planning and you're applying some foundational accounting principles. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to have some type of foundation around your business that you, can, that you can manage consistently that will help you keep track of everything that's going on. And so this includes basic um, bookkeeping. Um, it absolutely includes a monthly and a quarterly review so you can understand how your business is performing and also outsourcing this when, when necessary. So if you're a, you know, uh, maybe you're a general contractor or you're a, a real estate agent or a, uh, I mean, it, it could apply to any, any profession that you're in. We all go into seasons where things are just very busy. Things life gets overwhelming. And maybe we are managing books ourselves, but it's, it's important to know when you need help and to outsource, outsource those things so that uh, things don't fall through the cracks and you end up in a tough position at the end of the year. So if you are optimizing your, your 
the way you're subtracting the reductions through some basic bookkeeping. Um, I highly recommend QuickBooks Online. It's, it's very user friendly. It's very easy to use. It's very easy to share with an accountant or a CPA. Um, but if you're optimizing your deductions, if you're tracking things throughout the year, instead of that stack of receipts that you saw uh, that you're going to be mumbling through if you, you know, during tax time, uh, it's very easy just to pull up a profit and loss statement and a balance sheet and be able to provide that information to your account. And that's not only going to save you just uh, time, it's going to save you money and it's going to save you hassle, not just a personal hassle, but hassle from the IRS. The, most challenging thing is to be selected for audit or selected for review by the IRS and not have any kind of foundational structure underneath your business to, to be able to provide them with the documentation and information that they need uh, to get through whatever, I guess, situation is, has caused them to, to put you under audit. Any questions so far? All right. So I'm gonna go through um, and just touch on what are some of the typical expenses that exist for a business owner? And many of y'all, as business owners, I'm sure have deducted these things, but you know, your advertising, your marketing, your promotion, promotions, those are, uh, those are deductions that add up. If you're a real estate agent and you're running open houses and you're printing flyers, like those are costs that add up throughout the year. And so being able to track that throughout the year means you're gonna maximize the amount that you're able to deduct for that for that expense. Same thing goes for your supplies, you know, your office supplies. We tend to forget how much we spend on actual stationery and supplies and pens and stickers. I mean, pretty much anything in this room here that you see in front of you has, a, has some type of business cost to it. Um, and, you know, it's not uncommon to run into Walmart, pick something up, and just forget to track it. So office supplies, um, and I'll have a list that I, I'd be more than happy to share with you on deductions if you'd like it after the presentation. Uh, but advertising, bank fees, if you have licenses and permits, um, especially if you're an insurance agent, make sure that you're, you're deducting those, uh, those licensing fees and have those continuing education courses. Um, you know, your rents, your office equipment, and uh, any kind of legal or consultation services that you have to all right. We also have cost of goods. Um, just as I was kind of talking to people in the room, I don't think anybody's in manufacturing or, or actually building any kind of uh, product. Uh, but this is another category of uh, deductions that you can take. So just tracking your inventory, tracking the cost that it, that it is to create that, uh, that inventory, whatever it is, and then the cost of labor for that. Vehicle expense. Everybody knows they can deduct their business mileage. Uh, it's, this is a huge deduction for a lot of people, especially if you're an insurance agent, if you're a real estate agent, if you're in uh, any kind of industry where you're often traveling to visit your clients, your vehicle mileage, it can really save you on your taxes. What I see often though, is people not tracking the mileage. And so it becomes very difficult at the end of the year to determine what deduction you should take for that vehicle mileage. Now, if you are set up on something like QuickBooks, uh, and there's a thousand other apps that exist out there that will help you track your business mileage, if you are tracking that mileage throughout the year, I would, I would argue that nine times out of 10, you're actually gonna have a bigger deduction than what you would have tried to claim if you're gonna claim that deduction just based off of memory or based off of your, your total vehicle mileage. The uh, average driver in San Antonio drives about 18,000 miles a year, which sounds enormous, right? But I bet if we were to look at our honors, we're, we're probably exceeding that just as business owners with all of the, the traveling and events and things that we do throughout the, the year. So um, this is just, it's something that is, I, I'm very passionate about just getting on some type of platform or using QuickBooks so that you can track that mileage so you can maximize that. And then home office expenses, if you have a dedicated area in your home that you use for a uh, for a home office you can potentially deduct that as a uh, as an expense and there's two different ways that you can take that deduction there's direct expense and then there's indirect expense so uh, this can add up for people your direct expense is going to be anything that's like absolutely critical to your business that, that is specific to your business in that home office 
Uh, most of these home office expenses are going to be indirect expenses. Oh, did I switch slides? Are going to be indirect expenses. And uh, you get to take a, a proportion of your, home, of your home as that expense. So say you've got a thousand square foot home, you've got a hundred square foot office, just to keep the math simple, you can deduct 10% of any one of those indirect expenses. So if your utility bills or your rent is $10,000 at the end of the year, you can deduct 10% of that as a deduction. And so those, those costs can really add up. Um, this is something that is um, that can put you on the radar with the IRS when you're taking this home office deduction. So again, being able to track those expenses, having the right numbers and figures to, to back the deduction is important here. All right, so uh, I'm going to give you a case study. And this is Tamara again. And we saw she was frustrated earlier and she decided she was going to get things together. So we'll say that uh, she spent $500 throughout the year using QuickBooks Online. So she's doing the bookkeeping and accounting herself. Um, you could go out there and hire a CPA firm or an accountant or a bookkeeper to handle this for you, but she did it on the, on the cheaper side and, and just committed to managing this herself. We'll say that she spent $1,000 with consultants or an accountant on a quarterly basis to review her, her financial position, to review her profit and loss, and to help her determine if she needs to pay any quarterly tax. And we'll say that at the end of the year, because she did all of those things, that she was able to come to her tax preparer in a timely, uh, in a timely time frame and uh, with everything organized. And that in itself is going to save money. If you are showing up on uh, April 15th <laughs> for your taxes, uh, which I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it's like 30%. It, it's, a, it's a high percentage of, of Americans that are showing up at the tax deadline or at the tax deadline to file an extension. Um, if you're at that point, you're, you're paying more in tax preparation fees than you need to. And uh, it just goes with the territory. It's a lot It's a lot of work when you're coming to an accountant at that last hour. Uh, and most accountants, you know, they, they should have your best interest in mind. And nobody wants to rush through your, your financial information when it comes down to the wire. So we'll say that she spent $2,000 total on her taxes and her accounting. If you're organized, I, I use the... Uh, Kind of the basis for this of saying she made about a hundred thousand dollars in a year, and we're all at different levels, and all of this is scalable, and it can all be specific to the industry that you're in. But it is absolutely possible that when you've got the right steps in place, when you've got that foundation, that at a minimum you can save about fifteen thousand dollars in deductions when it all adds up, or you can find fifteen thousand dollars in deductions when that all adds up. And if you're making about a hundred thousand dollars in income. That can save you about $3,500 in tax. And that's, uh, doesn't matter how much money you're making, like we could all use $3,500. And we could all invest that into other areas of our business. Uh, I mean, that's $3,500 that you can put into market. And you get to sleep at night. You're not stressed about your taxes. <laughs> all right, so um, and just a, that's a really high level of, of deductions and like I said, it seems pretty basic, and I, I think we all have a general idea of what it means to, to, it, to take out those deductions and to claim those expenses. Um, but really, you don't have to pay a lot of money to go out there and, and outsource this. I mean, these are just very practical things that you can do on your own with just a little bit of discipline and maybe the right people around you. All right, so next I'm going to get into a little more of the Nitty gritty. Uh, I'm going to talk about the entity uh, strategy when it comes to tax savings. And uh, I'm going to ask the question is the entity that you're structured as looking to? And what is an entity? An entity is, is basically your business. How, how does the state and how does the federal government view your business? What are you, what are you structured as? Uh, I have lots of these conversations uh, about entity formation. I've had a lot more now with COVID. You know, people are losing their jobs, and more and more people are deciding that they're going to go off and start their own business. Uh, but it's important. I'm, I'm just going to kind of give the basics around what the entity structures are and what they aren't. But when you are structured as an entity, uh, you can either be a DBA, meaning you're just a, a sole proprietor. You have no real like official structure around you. 
Uh, you could be an LLC or you could be a corporation. Now, it's important when you're selecting what you're going to be that you know what your plan is. And so we talked about vision, we talked about strategy. If, uh, if you're in a, in, a, uh, in a business that you're, you're only doing for a season, you know, if you're baking cakes, but you're only planning on doing it for, for six months or so, you may not want to go in there and set up an LLC. You may just be spending money on something that's not necessarily going to benefit you. Uh, if you're a real estate investor, or if you are uh, flipping homes, or if you are, um, you know, uh, doing something that involves a lot of assets, then at that point, you may absolutely want to set up some type of LLC so that you're protecting yourself. But it's important to know when you're a DBA, when you're just a sole proprietor, uh, in general, there isn't any action that you need to take with the state. If you're an LLC, you're going to have to, or a corporation, you're going to have to follow your uh, articles of formation with your state. And then there's a couple of basic requirements that you need to follow. This could be a whole other class, but at a high level, you're going to want to have your articles of formation. You're going to want to have an operation agreement. And you're going to want to make sure that you're staying up to code with uh, the franchise and use tax and other state compliance uh, requirements. Now, when you are an LLC, when you do, and I'm going to talk, I'm not really going to talk about corporations, but some of the, some of the same concepts apply. Um, I'm going to talk about LLC because that's one of the more popular business structures and it's also one of the most flexible business structures. When you are an LLC, you are, uh, you have a unique opportunity to decide how you want to be taxed at the federal level. So uh, I'll go into that. If you are that DBA, or if you're a single member LLC, the default tax method is going to be a disregarded entity. So when you're a disregarded entity, it doesn't mean anything negative against your business. All that means is the IRS isn't looking for your business to file its own specific tax return. So you're going to file all of your business activity on your Schedule C, which is tied to your individual tax return, your 1040. And when you do that, all of the profit, the net profit, is going to, is going to be taxed at a self-employment tax rate at 15.3%. Now, I get asked this question a lot. Um, like, what is self-employment tax? Why do I have to pay self-employment tax? Self-employment tax is, the, because you're self-employed, it's essentially the replacement for payroll tax that you would have paid as an employee. So when you work for a company, you're going to pay, you know, uh, gosh, like around 6 to 7% in your social security tax. You're going to pay one to two percent in your Medicare tax, and uh, what a lot of people don't realize, your company is actually paying the other half of that Medicare and Social Security tax on your behalf as a as a business expense for that company. So that comes out to about fifteen point three percent in total that was paid if, if you're an employee to the federal government. As a uh, sole proprietor, there's no company to pay your half of, of that tax, and so you're paying the full amount, which is where the self-employment tax rate comes from. Uh, it's not your federal income tax because you still pay federal income tax on top of any income that you've earned. But just looking at the business specifically, that Schedule C, whatever your earnings are, it's going to be subject to that self-employment 15.3%. And that'll be important because the, when we talk about S corporation here in a minute, that's going to be one of the, the big distinctions that will help you save in taxes. Now, if you're a multi-member LLC, by default, the IRS is going to consider you a partnership. When you're a partnership, you are going to file a uh, 1065 tax form to the government. And this is really a informational form. No tax is paid by the partnership. It's considered a pass-through entity. And uh, what that means is the, the company, the business, the partnership is going to file that 1065. That 1065 is going to show what the profits were or the losses for that business. And then that company is going to issue Schedule K-1s, which will go out to each member of that partnership, and it will show their allocation based off of their, their percentage in the partnership. So it's a 50-50 partnership. If the business made $100,000, each partner is going to get a $50,000 K-1 that they're going to report on their tax return. And that K-1 in a partnership is going to be taxed at a 15.3% tax rate. So it's taxed the same way as somebody would be if, if they're self-employed. Um, there are lots of asterisks as we go through some of this stuff. So it, you know there may be some situations where you have somebody that's a that's a passive partner. Like there's other things, but 
gen in general terms, if both you and your partner are actively engaged in the business, that's the way that it's going to work. All right, so I say all of that to set up the S corporation election. So when you're an LLC, you can choose how to be taxed by the IRS. So like I said, if you're a multi-member, by default, you're going to be a partnership. You're going to file a 1065. If you're a sole uh, member LLC, by default, you're going to be a disregarded entity. You can actually file a form 2553 to the IRS, and uh, you can elect to be taxed as an S corporation. So uh, it's it can be a huge, huge, huge benefit to your business. Uh, there's requirements. So anytime the government is going to give you something that's that's good, there's going to be some handoffs, right? There's going to be some trade-offs. There's going to be some requirements or some strings attached. And so before you uh, even jump into being a S corp, you must have a solid understanding of what you're getting yourself into, because I see lots of business owners get themselves in, uh, in trouble and just have a headache because they set up that S corporation because somebody told them it was a good idea to do. And then they're in a situation where they're not managing it correctly and they're having issues with the IRS. So some of the basic requirements, you must be a domestic corporation. Uh, so there aren't any uh, foreign entities allowed in a uh, S corporation. There are some shareholder limitations. So there's limitations to the number of shareholders that can be in your business, as well as uh, the types of and class of shareholders that you have in your business. Um, there are a couple of ineligible types of corporations. So uh, most businesses are eligible for S corp, but if you are in insurance, you may actually not be eligible for S corp uh, designation. Um, you must maintain your books and all of your filings. And at this point, if you're electing this, this tax structure, it's a non-negotiable. It's not a um, it's not a nice to have. It's a must have, or you will get yourself in a in a in a mess. And you've got to file your 1120 tax return in a timely fashion. Now, the I wouldn't say it's the biggest requirement, but it's the most overlooked requirement. You must pay yourself a payroll. So, as a S corporation, if you're an active member in that or S corporation. It's imperative that you are setting yourself up as a payroll, as a salary employee of your business. And that's a huge distinction between just an LLC and an S corporation. And when I say payroll and salary, that's not an honor job. It's not a, uh, it's not a distribution. Like you, you, are, you have a payroll. In that payroll, you're paying taxes, you're paying Social Security, you're paying Medicare. So, S corporation election, you filed that 2553 form to elect that with the state, with the government. Now you're considered a pass through entity or a domestic uh, corporation. You're going to file an 1120S, which is very similar to the 1065. And on that 1120S, you're still going to issue those K1s to all of your shareholders. You have a question, Yeah. On the 1123, and the 1120S, you So the 1120S, uh, for pass-through entities, you've got to follow them. This last year was a little different with COVID, but when you are a pass-through entity at 1065 or an 1120S, you have to file by March 15th or file an extension by March 15th, which is actually a month before the normal tax deadline. Um, so that's a great question, Javi, um, because I have had clients come in April for their uh, for their S corp or for their partnership, and then they're already too late. Um, and then the deadline, if you do file for an extension. Still can't file for an extension for your, uh, your pass through entity, your partnership, or your S Corp. Uh, the extension deadline is September 15th. Yeah, great question. All right. Um, but just to kind of piggyback off that, if you've got partners, you know, it's you don't want them waiting all year to get their full one so they can do their tax. And that's just a, it can be a bad reflection on, on your business and, and your, the way you're managing. All right, so you can expect to be taxed in two ways whenever you are an S corporation, and that's through your payroll and it's going to be through your distributions. So, uh, how am I doing on time, Bobby? Am I good? <laughs> All right, so uh, just to illustrate what this means, because uh, this can be kind of a, a, a weird concept to grasp, but uh, we'll use Ian here as our, as our example of a sole proprietor. So, he may be a DBA. He may have an LLC, either way it's treated the same. He hasn't elected to be any kind of S-Corp. Uh, when he does his taxes, we'll say that he filed a Schedule C, 
And he made $150,000 in net profit. So that's, a, that's a pretty good, good payout for a, a single guy, you know, working insurance or working um, whatever industry he's in. That $150,000 in net profit, it's going to be subject to the 15.3% self-employment tax rate. There are uh, a couple of little asterisks, like there is a limit to your actual uh, the Medicare tax, or excuse me, your social security tax. So some of that would be factored in this example. Uh, but then his income was also going to be subject to his federal tax rate. We'll use Tamara again. So she's an LLC. Uh, we'll say she's a single member LLC. She also made $150,000 in a year. Uh, she has elected to be an S Corp. She's going to pay herself a reasonable salary of $50,000. So out of that reasonable salary, she's paying her payroll tax. So she's paying her portion of the payroll tax. Uh, she's also paying technically the business's portion of that payroll tax. She's going to pay her uh, federal tax. And we're not going to really get into this as a tax savings benefit. As an employee, she, she can also uh, potentially get some free tax savings benefits, uh, such as maybe a 401k or maybe a health savings account to even further uh, reduce her tax liability. So she's going to take this, uh, this paycheck and she's going to create a W-2 for herself and she'll report that on her 1040 tax return, just as many of us would if, we, if we've ever worked for an employer. Now, the other $100,000 that she made, that's going to be considered distributions. So that $100,000 in profit, that's going to be uh, deducted, or her salary is going to be deducted from her profit. So she's got $100,000 left. She's going to report that on her 1120S form. She's filed it timely. She stayed on top of everything. She's going to distribute the K-1s to her shareholders. In this example, she's the only uh, shareholder. So she's going to take those distributions of that $100,000. She's going to report uh, that as a distribution as ordinary income. And this is the key for an S corporation right here. That ordinary income is not subject to the self employment tax. So essentially, she's taken $100,000 of her, of her profits, of her income, and she shielded it from that additional 15.3% payroll tax. That's the huge, huge, huge benefit of having an S corporation. And these numbers can scale. And again, if there are other little asterisks that can go on there. So I always recommend that you sit down with somebody and talk to your specific business. But as it scales, it, if she's working as a, as a real estate agent and she's making $50,000, that's a reasonable salary for a real estate agent. If her income increases, then she's just further saving money on taxes. If she makes $300,000 in a year, she could potentially still claim that $50,000 reasonable salary. And then Reap the benefits of tax savings off of that additional uh, income. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, so it's a it's a really great mechanism. Like I said, there's lots of strings attached and a lot of requirements that you have to follow. Uh, one of the most common things that I'll see um, is uh, you know maybe a a customer, maybe a client started their, their business, they went and they set up a, an S Corp right from the get-go. Year one, they really weren't making any money to, to do a reasonable salary, and so they blew it off. Year two, they make half a million dollars, but they haven't paid themselves a payroll. And so now they're a big target for the IRS. And there are going to be just a lot, of, a lot of issues that they have to deal with. All right. So when we look at their tax liability overall, for both of these examples, uh, for both of these case studies, uh, we assumed $150,000 in profit. Ian is going to have a $40,000 tax liability. Tamara? she's only going to have a $20,000 tax liability. So that's $13,000 in savings off of $150,000 in, in income and money in her pocket. Now, Tamara, because she did have $50,000 of her income through payroll, she's likely already paid some of her, she paid her payroll tax, we know that, but she's likely already paid some of her federal income tax just through her payroll deduction, depending on how she selected those elections to be. And then uh, she's, potentially already planned quarterly. And so she knows where she stands tax-wise so she can make sure that she doesn't owe a big tax bill at the end of the year. So again, it really, um, as we talk about these deductions, as we talk about this energy structure, it really, uh, it really comes down to, are you focused on what matters? So in just this example, with the optimizing of the, of the tax savings, the, the uh, 
changing of the, of the business entity. Tamara saved over $16,000 in taxes. And that's huge for somebody that's a small business. And it comes down to just having that growth mindset with how, how, you're, how you're running your business, proactively planning so that you can make these elections and you know when to make these elections and when it makes sense, building a solid foundation for your business, and then also having those strategic partnerships around you to help kind of guide you through these processes. So that is all I have, y'all. Um, I do have a copy of this uh, presentation, if you'd like it, um, especially with the deduction. Sometimes it's nice to look at those. But you can visit my website, jamesfamilytax.com slash mastermind. You can download the PDF version of this uh, here. And uh, you can take one of my cards. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions uh, or if you need any assistance. So that's it. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you, James. Thank you so much. Um, and I brought him here because he does my taxes and he's has made me aware of that. And those are some of the things that we don't look at. Into like, And just for a quick testimony, uh, when you talk about you can get in trouble with the taxes, uh, you know, I'm very blunt to say I that happened to me in 2006. I didn't know I was supposed to pay some taxes. And well, I wasn't told by my partner. Right. And three, that was in 2006. It started with like 500 and something dollars. By 2012 or 13, I owed $15,000. By 2018, I owed $32,000. By one, you said it. Like, and we were an S corporation. I didn't know what I was doing. I just, we followed the S corporation and things like that. So, you know, something led me to say that, you know, that happened to me, okay? But for those that have faith by the grace of God, Last month, I got a letter from them and says, Javier, you owe nothing. It was never me, by the way. They didn't, they didn't check my profile and see how cute I was and then, and then took the money away. I, I, I believe in that. But those messes can turn into a message. And that's why I thought it was important for all of us to know, right? Because I already know it, right? But what about all the people like, like ourselves, right? So thank you, James. I really, really appreciate your time because I just one thing we'll never get back, right, is the time that we're spending. So we're grateful that you took the time out of your daily schedule and your wife appreciates you uh, of everything you do for, for the community because these are the things that we need as a mastermind group. Like what is it that we can, how can we help somebody else? What can we say that one thing? Did we pay attention? Um, and, and one of the things that I've always asked people and when I do a lot of online webinars is, just think to yourself, raise your hand virtually. Don't, don't raise it, just in your mind. Do you truly have somebody in your business that's coaching you? You know how many businesses today opened up, launched in August? It was a record breaking because of all COVID. Everything that's happening right now, people having to reinvent themselves. We all know that. They reinvent themselves and then they go into business. They say, you know what? I need, I'm gonna open up my own business, right? With no idea, they have the vision, they have the, the, and then next thing you know, it's like, they're done. Two years, most of them will last two years. That's painful to know that because we as business owners, as entrepreneurs, we know if we made it, if you guys are over two years, you got a great chance of making it. But most, most don't do that. And we don't, we just care about ourselves. We don't care about those. And guess what? It affects all of us because when they go down under, guess who pay the price? Taxpayers. So I believe the more we give, the more we empower those businesses, the more that we're gonna get back as a community. Like we need to be in here now more than ever. Like what is it that's missing in my business? I look at it every day. I'm the first one that like, please, please show me my blind spots. And I'm, I'm careful when I ask that because I, I feel a lot of people show me a lot of them, <laughs> right? We all have them. So with that said, I don't know any of you guys have uh, a business plan. Uh, we, we talked about the business plan. And you, you saw right, if you don't have a roadmap to success, it's, it's just, it's very hard to take your business to the next level. So I don't know where you guys are at in business, but I do this a lot with, with businesses. As a matter of fact, I asked uh, Joanne if, if I could use, um, this is what Joanne, where's Joanna? I think she went to the restroom. She's an esthetician. And, what, and, and this is why I brought him here. Because part of business coaching, what we do is an analysis, right? So we start with the financials, right? The financials, last year she made over $100,000. We put in 
and based on her market domination, her lead generation. So we asked all these different things, right? And between just increasing five to 10% in her business, right? With $100,000, right? Which her gross profit was $75,000. So Joanne last year did about $75,000. Yeah, I'm talking about, she's like, who's talking about? So we're, we're doing that. But after we did the valuation and we said, okay, what's the roadmap to your success? Like, where do you want to go? Do you want to make 200,000? Well, what is it? Do you know how to scale each area of your business? And she didn't have that. And, you know, has it been easy? Heck no, because we, we all struggle, right? But having a roadmap, so what this does is actually has a ninth annual plan. So we increase in her profit. What is it, 357? So 357 minus 75 is over $275,000 that we showed her by creating this roadmap. So, and this actually creates a report right here. So we actually have this report for her. So she has it. So if, not, if some of you guys don't, or maybe you do, because you have it all together, but you know a small business owner that needs this, okay, that needs a roadmap to success. And we can only do this for a certain amount of time. We're doing these for free for the business owners because we want to take those blind spots away from people, right? And if we don't do that, then what's going to happen is like, we're just after selling a product, but we're not giving them the solution, the real solution that they need. Maybe the, the problem is not in the in the in the uh, the drip campaigns or the upsells or the lead generation that they talk about bundling, but maybe it's it's what what he said about cutting costs. How do you cut costs? That's one way to cutting costs. I did that to a business owner, and when I showed him what he could do, because he was already an S corporation, he did he has an S corporation. He didn't even know why he had it like I did back then. When I showed him those fifty, remember you you showed me yesterday about the fifteen percent. It was right there automatically. I covered the fees for me to coach him for 12 months automatically. And I doubled his, his rate. Because at the end of the day, as a business owner, you want to know, hmm, what are you trying to sell me? You want to know, is, how does this work for me, right? What is my return on the investment that I'm putting together? Like a lot of people during the end of the year don't understand that. I did it last year and this, the end of this year. And I did it. You're right. I told him, I said, let me ask you a question. He goes, what, do you, what, would, what would you need to take to the next level? He's, he said, I need to bring a home, you know, I need to have a strategy in my marketing. I'm like, I said, and how much are you paying the IRS? So he showed me his, his taxes and I'm like, why are you paying the IRS versus paying a marketing agency to do that for you? I said, you're either gonna pay that, I'm sorry, IRS. Anybody hear the IRS? You're either gonna pay the IRS, you're gonna pay the IRS or you're gonna pay your business. I'm like, I'm like, let's invest in my business so I don't have to pay the IRS. We don't see that. So again, this is absolutely free. I do have a, a team of coaches nationwide that will be able to help you and do this Zoom, 90 minutes. So if you text right now, PAS, Profit Accelerators, PAS, to the number 210-592-4440, if you text that, you can get on a calendar to do that for your business. We're not charging you anything. We usually charge $1,900 to do something like that for business. But again, if we don't do this for somebody, they'll never see the blind spot. This is, give, this is the, the ability for us to be able to give Joanne the blind spots where she was missing. Like she didn't have, we were just talking about her market domination position. I'm so proud of you because now she knows it. She knows her market domination position. And without a market domination position, you're just a me too company. Copycat, you hear that from the challenge, right? The copycat, exactly. Don't be a copycat. Have a, 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 a market domination position. So that's going to that's gonna be it to, for today. Um, Gina, we got some gifts we're going to give away. And I have the last gift. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a drawing for the last one. So the last one for Gina goes, the last one, what I'm going to do is um, there's a 12 month process, if you look here, the, the strategies, right? The strategies goes in here, implementation, right? This is a 12 month process, right? I have an online academy for 12 months and I'm gonna give it to one person. That's a two, that's $2,700 academy that I sell for absolutely free. You don't want it, I'm gonna let you transfer it to somebody else because I want somebody else to be blessed by it. If you don't, Sometimes we got the blessings. God's trying to bless you right there. And, and, and you're just sitting there like, well, at least you don't want to give me the blessing, you know? So we can use it to use it, transfer maybe as a gift for somebody, bless somebody else. So that's my gift 
for today's amazing mastermind. And Gina? Well, Richard and Alexa, right? I, Alexis, um, I picked a ticket for the food bank. Um, Terry, is this you? 20404? <laughs> I do. What is that for? It's for the food bank. They, she donated it. So, is it okay if I get a picture? So, you yeah, have sure. a gift card. I want to get a picture. Of awesome. Right here. Terry, okay. you come right here in the front. Take a picture. And then, um, while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, and that's this work? This yours? Oh, this is yours. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. Uh, Vera? And did you want to, what is in here? Did you want to show me? Okay. Did you really want it? <laughs> Did you want it back? <laughs> so, okay. James Watts. Is he still here? Who was it, like, sitting there in the back? He's gone? Okay. That's all right. Okay. Uh, Alejandra Farias. Yay, you are the winner. So, can I go ahead? Um, uh, I'm going to go do the picture first. Richard, Harry. So I'm going to help you with pictures. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to get a picture. Y'all stand right here and take a picture of my camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you can put your mask. Just go like don't, this. don't Just talk. Go like this. Look. <laughs> Just, yeah, don't talk. <laughs> okay. Just, and then it would be, be like that. Okay. And then we'll go right here. Ready? Look at me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Hold on, let me just do my camera real quick. Okay, here we go. All these apps. Okay, there we go. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Awesome. And then next, uh, we'll go ahead and get a picture of Vera. Vera and Alejandra. Just, if y'all stand right there and I'll get a picture. Oh, yeah, ready. One, two, three. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ready? Oh, wait a minute. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right. And then I'm going to put all the cards back in there. I'm going to put all the cards back in there and make sure that I got everybody. Sit real good. Make sure Okay, and this is for your drawing. Come on, Richard. Okay. All right, drum roll. Here we go. Let's see. Military, thank you for your service. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Did I think? Was it this part? <laughs> Ta -da! Who is it? No, you're not. Who is it? Marco. Oh my goodness. All right. Oh my goodness. This is going to be man. Awesome. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three. You want to just go like this and, and just stand, stand a little bit separate. There we go. There we go. Ready? There we go. Ready? One, two, three. Got it. Oh, wait, let me do one for my phone. Oh, well, it's time to network. Time left lunch. Y'all have a great uh, weekend. Thank you. And remember, if you want to register, let me know for the networking for next week. Are you okay. I was just going to tell you. If you're good, um, Thank you.
He loves so much. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Good to see you guys. Can you show us that? Okay. At what time? Thank <laughs> you.